My dad's never been one to complain about being unwell. The only time I'd ever been scared he might come to grief was when I took him to see Chris Rock at Brixton Academy and he laughed so hard I genuinely thought he might do himself a mischief. So when he was taken to hospital with kidney failure, it came as a real shock because I knew it had to be serious. He'd known about his kidney disease for a while, but typical of him, he hadn't wanted me to worry. And my dad is by no means alone. In the UK, three million of us are at risk of kidney disease. So you or someone you love could find yourself in the same boat as me and my dad. That's why over the next few minutes, I want to show you how you can help to make a difference and save lives. Deborah Bakewell had lived with cysts in her kidneys since her 20s, but by her early 50s, her kidneys were failing. Whilst I was working full time, I had nothing left energy wise for the end of the day or indeed weekends. It was, I, you know, I was continually having to rest. And the doctor um, really bluntly said that I, that I would need dialysis, otherwise, I would die because my kidneys would not last me out until I was aged 55. Deborah joined the 27,000 others in the UK on dialysis, a machine that acts as an artificial kidney. My prescription for dialysis was nine hours a night, seven nights a week. At 7.30, I'm in bed, getting myself connected to a machine, and I'm stuck there. It's keeping you alive, but it's not a... The quality of life has gone. Dialysis keeps people like my dad alive, but it puts a real strain on the body. And it's not a cure, just a means of short-term survival until a kidney comes along for transplant. But here's the problem. There just aren't enough kidneys available for the 6,000 people on the waiting list who desperately need them. 10-year-old Matt Patrix is football mad. I am obviously a Chelsea supporter. <laughs> Chelsea bed. <laughs> and right here is John Terry signed boots and a John Terry signed armband. Matt's mum, Nicola, was over the moon when her son was born in 2005. It was just gorgeous and it was just so precious, you know, that I've got this little being. But five weeks after the birth, Nicola's new baby became very unwell and he was diagnosed with congenital nephrotic syndrome. Matt's kidneys were failing and wouldn't recover. Matt went straight on to dialysis, but within a few months, he had to have one of his kidneys removed. Then, at the age of five, he lost his remaining kidney. The thought of him being here with no kidneys is very, very scary, because we are now relying on a machine to keep our son alive. Matt has to spend 12 hours on dialysis every night. When I look at Matthew on his dialysis machine, I wish it was me. I wish it wasn't him, because he should be doing all the things that all the other children are doing. He should be, he should be arguing with me about coming in, when actually he's a little bit of a soldier, really. He'll just come in, march upstairs and do as he's told, and it's quite sad. And it, as a mother, to watch your child suffer, it's, it's horrendous. <laughs> Make sure you get your line out, that's it. Dialysis isn't a long-term solution, and Matt is having more and more side effects. His best hope is a kidney transplant, and he's been waiting for seven years. The hardest part about this is the fact that Matthew has waited so long. I kind of want to tell him everything's going to be all right and make it all better, and I, I, can't, give, I can't promise him those things. The most amazing thing I could get in the future is um, a kidney because I could be able to do anything I want except the, like, <laughs> illegal things. But <laughs> you know what I mean. Getting more people to be donors is obviously important, but at the moment there's another big problem. About a fifth of donated kidneys aren't usable. So the real hope for people on the list lies in medical research. And thankfully, there's a charity that's purpose is to make every kidney count. It's called Kidney Research UK. Through the millions the charity spends on research each year, Kidney Research UK is helping scientists to make huge advances into the treatment and prevention of kidney disease. One such team is tackling the problem of kidney shortage head on. It's led by Professor Mike Nicholson at the University of Cambridge. 
He's developed a new technique called normothermic perfusion, which holds the potential to save many lives. Our research has taken kidneys that were actually declined by every transplant centre in the country and put them on the warm perfusion machine. And what happens is that you can see whether the kidney is healthy. Our preliminary information suggests that up to 70% of the kidneys that are being thrown away are actually suitable for transplantation. And if that's right and that is introduced across the country, then several hundred extra transplants could be done each year. Research like this is painstaking and expensive. But thankfully, Kidney Research UK had the resources to fund Professor Nicholson throughout his studies. We simply would not have been able to do the research without the grant monies that we have been given by Kidney Research UK. After years in the lab, finally it was time to offer the new technique to an actual patient. When you get the call about the transplant or the potential transplant, you just your, your heart is in your mouth. All of a sudden there's this huge excitement and anticipation that my life's going to change. It's going to get back to normal again. Deborah rushed into hospital and prepared for surgery. But when her donor kidney arrived, it looked like it was too damaged for transplant. Professor Nicholson asked Deborah if she wanted to be the first person to try his new technique. There was just no, no second thought, to be perfectly honest. Whilst I thought to myself, a split second, I'm a guinea pig. Then afterwards, I th it immediately, your, your you know, sensible side of your head starts working and think, when am I ever going to get this opportunity again? When we transplanted it, the kidney pinked up immediately and worked straight away and Deborah was off her dialysis immediately, so it was, a, it was a great success. The kidney transplant allowed Deborah to regain her independence. Following my transplant, my first step-granddaughter was born. At one point, I never even thought I would see step-grandchildren. But here I am now, enjoying every minute of them. It's absolutely fantastic. In my case, I owe the professor and his fellow researchers my life. The next stage of the research is to run a bigger clinical trial, which will require a lot of money. But for patients like Matt, time is of the essence. We've got people waiting a long, long time for organs. And if we could make those kidneys usable, then perhaps, perhaps it would change everything. Perhaps the next child won't have to wait seven years like Matthew. Every day in the UK, someone dies waiting for a kidney transplant. The more money Kidney Research UK can raise, the more research they can fund, and the more lives they can save. Kidney Research UK is making progress, funding a whole range of groundbreaking research projects, and you can help them to make every kidney count by donating today. Please help. To make a donation, please go to the website kidneyresearchuk.org. If you want to donate by phone, then call 0845 070 7601. Or if you'd like to post a donation, make your cheque payable to Kidney Research UK and send it to Kidney Research UK, Neen Hall, Lynchwood Park, Peterborough, PE2 6FZ. And if you want the charity to claim gift aid on your donation, please include an email or postal address so that they can send you a gift aid form. Thank you.